um, coming to you with another video about some project that I started, which I wish I wouldn't have. Um, so what I'm working on is service of my 2014 Jeep Patriot. Uh, there are some service manuals that you can download and all that and spend money on and there are some YouTube videos of some guys changing transmission fluid on a Hyundai. I don't even know what model. So anyways, I'm working on a um, transmission fluid change on my 2014 Jeep Patriot with a six-speed automatic. It's not the constant velocity transmission, the CVT or whatever they call it. Um, it's the regular six-speed automatic, which... Um, was introduced in 2014 so I have the first year I have now 60,000 miles on it um, they say that you don't need to change it but I still want to do it anyways um, and that's the dilemma that I got myself into uh, there's lots of contradicting information there is a, a change procedure for Hyundai's and Kia's and other models that use the same transmission the transmission is a 6F 24 and um, I think I now have figured out how uh, the Jeep procedure changing and checking the fluid level uh, differs from the Hyundai so uh, I'm gonna show you what I figured out okay let me pause you here all right guys I'm back um, so we're looking into the engine compartment there's the airbox uh, the valve cover and here is usually where the battery is located and the battery and the tray had to be removed to access one of the many ports that this transmission has you see this little plug down there All right, let me give you an overview airbox that one that is going to be the filler plug it's a plastic plug you just stick a 3 8 drive of a uh, extension in there and take it loose it's plastic uh, don't over tighten it when you put it back in that is exactly the, the location where you're going to put your funnel in and put fluid in so now the next fun part is how do you check the fluid level that you have the proper fluid level and yeah there's some contradicting information I have a Jeep service manual and it does not mention at all here let me take some light with me so we can actually see what we're talking about it doesn't mention this little port that little port here is uh, uh, in the Hyundai procedure yeah let me give you an overview this is the bumper so we're looking rearwards on the driver's side of the vehicle um, this little hole is usually the the place where the Hyundai Elantra or Hyundai I don't even know models that have the same transmission check their fluid level so they they just um, have to open this and if there's a little bit of a stream coming out like this um, they have enough fluid in there what I'm assuming is that um, in those Hyundai's the transmission is installed in a different angle so it might be the same transmission but it's absolutely not the same uh, fluid level check procedure. The way Jeep does it, they actually have another port, which it took me like an hour to find because it's not here on the front of the transmission. It's not anywhere near this fill port. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, let, me, let me hang this light here. So I took this out and uh, I wanna say maybe three quarts came out. So there's definitely a lot of fluid in there, much higher than, than this port. So on Hyundai's and other uh, Kia's and whatnot that use the same, I think it's called a power tech transmission, uh, 6F24. And I even found a casting here at the bottom of the transmission that says MK6F24. Um, so here in a, in a Jeep, the fluid level must be much, much higher. So this is not the drain port, but the drain is right back there. See that black one? That one. I haven't taken that out yet. I, I just wanted to see what's going on here. I'm going to slap this little plug back in there. Um, it's actually um, 
a plug with a rubber kind of seal. There's a rubber seal in here. And uh, here, let me pause you for a second. I just want to wipe it clean and I'm holding the camera. Hold on. All right, guys, I'm back. I wiped this all clean. I uh, used some carp and choke cleaner to really wipe it off clean. And then it just goes in here like, like so. And then you just have to turn it until it clicks. Click, and that's it. Um, as long as your rubber gasket is still sealing, uh, there shouldn't be any leaking, uh, leakage going on. So let's wipe this off. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the actual drain plug, which is right over here. You need a 15 16 or a 24 millimeter, which is the same, 15 16 and 24 is compatible. Um, socket to get this out. And uh, yeah, sorry for the camera work here. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Okay, so right there, that's the drain plug. Um, see the relation so this is the front of the transmission right under the bumper pretty much is the oil pan so this is um kind of like the the uh the sump but here in this case the sump is on the side so this is like if you take this cover off with all those little screws here under here would be the uh, valve body now, oh, if you have ever seen a transmission, an automatic transmission on the inside, there's a valve body with lots of little um, valves. Okay, let's do this. One-handed. Yeah, okay, I got it, I think. It's all for you guys. One-handed. Okay, so now we're going to drain the rest of the transmission fluid out. They actually, once you... Once you drain that out, they give you a recommendation, 4.3 liters, no, co correction, 4.3 quarts, 4 liters. Here we go. Oh, it's not really bad. Oh, this is a magnetic plug. You see all the sludge on there, this, this kind of like creamy looking stuff. That's all metal. All right, guys, I'm going to drain this out, and then we're going to continue. I'm going to show you where you actually fill and uh, where you will um, have to check the level and then also how to do that. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, camera is running again. So like I said, in other models, this is the level of the transmission fluid, not in a G Patriot and I would assume not in a compass either. Um, maybe they mounted the transmission at a different angles. So in a, in a Kia or Hyundai, they are a little more tipped up. So this bottom edge gives you a perfect fluid level. In a Jeep, so it's still dripping. Here's a big picture of uh, where the drain plug is located. It's the far left side of the transmission, the outer edge left side uh, in driving direction. So this is the driver's side tire. Black, um, 15, 16 or 24 millimeter. And now I'm going to show you what you have to jump through, what kind of hoops you have to jump through um, to actually check the fluid level. So in the manual they give you um, two numbers. First, they want you to um, put four liters of transmission fluid. Let's get the light so we can see what we're doing. They want you to put four liters or 4.3 quarts into this port. Take that out. Like, like I said, uh, plastic, this doesn't get much um, torque at all. I think the drain plug and also the fluid level check port um, those plugs are steel into cast aluminum uh, they i think they get 32 foot pounds i can uh, verify that and then put it in the uh, description at the bottom um, this one here is plastic and has an o-ring in it you really only tighten it so it's tight um, so it's snug but don't over tighten it it will break 
so this is the fill port. And then they had this nice little black and white graphic of where the um, fluid level check port is. And I kept looking and looking and looking and looking everywhere and I couldn't find it. And they kept saying that you have to access it from the bottom. So, you know, I have an inspection pit. I took the, the plastic, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, guard the plastic cover that's under the engine off and then I kept looking around and looking around and you see my little DeWalt light pointing at something I don't even know uh, where is it what are we looking at Then under those hoses, I don't know if you can see it. That one, see the one with a black uh, blue dot on it. That is the check port. Like, how crazy can you do it? This is like near the firewall. We're like at the back side of the engine. Oh, something is blocking here. Something is blocking there. Yeah. So that's the check port. You need to take that off. I used a couple long extensions. Again, 15, 16 socket and a um, ratchet and took it off. It's already loose. And then they have a Chrysler tool. It's called a dipstick. Part number is 10323A. What that looks like is pretty much like this. A cylindrical bigger piece with a knurling on it like a handle and then they have a rod that's exactly 140 millimeters long and then they have some crazy measurements at certain temperatures the fluid level is at certain levels and uh, so you're supposed to get this tool costs about $35 on eBay so 10323A Chrysler dipstick um, instead of doing that I actually ended up just taking one of my older little screwdrivers that has kind of a nice flat surface here so it can get stuck in there and then it sits on the opening of that port. And uh, how I will figure out if uh, I actually have the, the right um, fluid level is by measuring. So um, their dipstick is exactly 140 millimeters or 14 centimeters. Uh, mine is a little shorter here, but um, so at lowest operation temperature, that's 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees um, Fahrenheit, the fluid level is supposed to be 25 millimeters from the tip of the, from the tip, see the, two and the three in the middle is 25 in between is 25 so um, right where my screwdriver starts or where actually the the flat blade ends is 25 and then from there it goes up 30 35 40 45 and that's how they measure that um, what you also need is a decent uh, OBD2 scanner that can give you the transmission fluid temperature. So you actually have to open this up, stick your dipstick in there, supposedly, um, have it running, and then uh, get your OBD2 scanner to tell you the transmission fluid temperature. And when it reaches 50 degrees Celsius, then you are supposed to pull that out and look where you are. And uh, yeah, with my, uh, my little dipstick here has no markings on it so uh, uh, the way they have it it's it's 140 millimeters long at the at the bottom is zero then 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and so on and so at 50 degrees Celsius it's supposed to be at 25 millimeters and then as it gets warmer it goes up 30 31 32 and they have a whole um, table of measurements there 
I think it's super crazy. Um, what I'm going to do for now is uh, put four liters in like they say and then you're supposed to start warming it up until uh, my OBD2 scanner says 50 degrees and then I'm supposed to get uh, a fluid level about here. I measured that and uh, then I will add a little bit until I get there. Yeah, um, I don't know if I will be able to show you all this. Uh, you kind of get the drift, yeah. Fill port, drain plug on the bottom, and also this other opening that you can pull out. I just did it for the fun. And then you are, you are. Uh, now we can't see it. It's it's like here's the uh, the exhaust manifold, and there's the firewall. That's uh, the heater hose is going through. And right there is this this uh, little plugity plug, and um, yeah, it's I, I don't know if if you actually would want to do that correctly in the garage or in your driveway. Even worse, I don't think if you would be able to do that because you you kind of the only way that you can stick your hand in there. Sorry for the camera work again is um i'll try to try to show you again huh. of course everything is in the way sorry guys this is really like a <sighs> you, you kind of see where my flashlight is lighting up uh, the area up there right um yeah i'll, I'll shove my hand in there so you kind of get an idea where this where it is So from underneath you can reach it. I can get there and stick this stick in and have a nice light pointing at it and then I can immediately see. It's, it's like the other end, the rear end of the transmission. But that's how you're supposed to do it in a Chrysler, no, in, in a Jeep Patriot. Yeah, um, I don't think I will be able to show you how I'm gonna pull this off. There's probably gonna be uh, some tools uh, throwing and some frustration going on especially now I already drained the fluid out I, I was about to change my mind and just leave it alone because they say with normal driving you never have to change it blah 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 I still want to do it so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna slap four liters in there and then we'll see okay guys um, maybe I pick it up later and uh, give you my final thoughts it's probably gonna be a disaster anyways you guys take care bye all right, guys, I'm back. <clears throat> I have a long funnel in this uh, fill port there. Again, airbox, valve cover. So this is the far left front corner of the transmission. And this little plug came out of this. Um, you, know, you can either put a 17, eh, what is it? 17 millimeter a socket on there or a 3 8 drive fits right into the square in the middle. <clears throat> I like the socket better. Um, I don't remember. Was it 17? You guys can figure that out. Put a funnel in there. And then uh, they say put 4 liters of um, fluid in there. Um, a gallon is 3.78 liters. So I put a gallon in it. And then there's a, you're supposed to start it up and idle it in park until your OBD2 scanner tells you um, the transmission fluid is 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're supposed to check uh, the fluid level. Yeah, you're supposed to start idling it and then put another liter in. Uh, a quart is almost a liter. So I'm going to do a gallon. There we go rest of my gallon is going in and I first thought I had to pour this like super slow so it doesn't spill out right where the funnel goes into the transmission but it's actually not that bad so I have most of it already in there I take a couple breaks here so it has some chance to not spill out make sure you clean out this funnel I, I took some uh, carb cleaner to it and wiped it out and sprayed it out 
because you don't want any contamination in your transmission. The cleaner you can do this, the better. Oh yeah, the, the transmission fluid. There's also a lot of confusing information. Um, of course, it's always best if you take the OEM brand Mopar transmission fluid. I didn't do that. I went cheap. I actually bought Walmart transmission fluid, but it um, is certified for that standard, which is SP4, where is it? That by the wrong one. There, uh, where it says Hyundai Kia Mitsubishi SP3, SP4 in uh, uh, in Latin numbers. SP4. That's the standard that this wants. And so I bought the SuperTech from Walmart. Uh, you can also get the same stuff from uh, Valvoline, Max Life. This is full synthetic, by the way. Um, or you can go to Chrysler or Jeep and spend $70 on this fill. And I figured, eh, you know, not really. So SP4. Uh, some people on the internet say ATF plus four, but that's a different, completely different transmission fluid. So make sure you buy Hyundai Kia Mitsubishi SP4. That's also the stuff that's in my owner's manual listed in the back, SP4, okay? All right, I'm gonna keep filling, then I'm gonna open my garage, and then I'm gonna start idling this car here, and then we'll see what happens. All right, take care, bye. All right, guys, so it's the next day. Um, I managed to uh, refill my automatic transmission, the 6F24 in my 2014 Jeep Patriot, and it's a six-speed automatic. It was quite a job. It was quite a job. As I showed you earlier, um, where the drain plug is, let's just go over it one more time, and now I'm repeating myself. So, front bumper. Uh, do we have light on this camera here? Hold on, guys. I pause you. There's some light. So we have this funky little plug here in the front, which is used in other vehicles as the uh, fluid level. In our case, in a Patri Patriot and a Compass, the fluid level is probably somewhere up here. So you cannot use this as your fluid level. Here's the drain plug. And all the way back there somewhere. Big, big. If I can, uh, it's right there, right there, see that, oh, you can't, I can't reach it, this one, that's the, the level check, fluid level check port, 15, 16 socket or 24 millimeter to open this up, and then um, you can either buy a tool made by Chrysler, which is part number 10323A. You can also buy a tool, same length, same shape, form, and everything, cheaper. That's why I would recommend it. It's part 1017, also by Chrysler. It's a rod that's 140 millimeters long, has a scaling increments of 10 millimeters. So it's starting, mine is only, 120 long, but um, I kind of reverse engineered this. I looked at pictures and it's, you know, the, the, the graduation on here is in mil 10 millimeter steps or five millimeter steps. So 140 is up there, zero is at the very bottom. And then my first black line there is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then they have a um, kind of a chart in the service manual that says that at certain temperatures, transmission fluid temperatures, 
the fluid level is supposed to be at 25 to 30, and then the temperature goes up, it's 27 to 32, and so on. So it's, it's going to be in the lower section here of my screwdriver, like this is 20. Uh, so 25 to 35 in that range. When the engine is running and the temperature is up to operation temperature. I checked with my OBD2 scanner, I have a blue driver, which is a really nice one. It doesn't show that sensor. I can look at all kinds of temperatures and, you know, intake air temperature and oil temperature and blah, blah, blah temperature, fuel temperature, but there's no transmission fluid temperature. So I don't know if they make that up, but I cannot pull this sensor up. So what I did, I grabbed one of those, Harbor Freight, 11 bucks, um, wherever the red point, the laser is pointed. It measures the temperature. So what I did, I started up the engine, let it run until I get some uh, water temperature indication on my instrument panel. That means that the engine is slowly getting warm and then I just, this here seems to be plastic. So I don't know how well the heat transfers over, but I just measured. So this is in Fahrenheit, huh? So yeah, this is in Fahrenheit. Um, they give you the temperature in Celsius. So uh, I guess I have to change that over. So right now it's 12 degrees Celsius. So once I get 50 or 60 degrees Celsius here at the plastic, and I know there's fluid behind it, uh, then I go and into the, the pour it that's somewhere at the back side of the transmission and stick my little screwdriver in there and then with a strong flashlight light this up and then the fluid level is supposed to be here 25 30 millimeter range you know if you look at those pictures um, you can totally make that out of a screwdriver and then I used a paint marker and just put those increments on there yeah so I get it refilled I'm gonna start it up one more time um, I didn't have enough in there, so I um, had to refill or fill the transmission a little more. And unfortunately, the, the easy to get to fill port is under the battery. So literally, it's, it's down under there. And, you know, for me to be able to start the car and run it, I had to kind of put the battery back in there. So to... Uh, put a little bit more fluid in, I came up with this little contraption. So it's a, a transmission fluid bottle. This is a kind of a attachment, what do they call it? A trans fluid gear oil spout that they sell at Home Depot, uh, not Home Depot, Home Depot, Walmart. Has different uh, adapters here, so this is for the small bottle. The black part would also fit on a big bottle, like if you have a gallon bottle. And then you have a piece of clear tubing. And then actually a, a kind of a barb and a cap. Fortunately, this whole thing was not long enough to reach down to this, um, to this fluid level check port, which I had open already. So I put a little bit more hose on it. And then I shoved the the hose or this tubing into the level check port, which I'm gonna show you one more time. So the engine compartment, engine, air filter. And can we see it? Can we see it? Can we not? I don't see it. Uh, I'm confused. Here's the port. You can see it. Put some more light down there. Oh, there, there it is. I got it now. See the little plug there? Is, uh, no, it's not focusing. Anyways, down there is the plug. So I can open that up shove the tube in and then stand up here and turn the bottle around gluck 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 and then done and uh, i hope i have the right amount of fluid in there now so i'm going to start up the engine again 
Of course, I will open the garage before I do that and then check with my dipstick one more time. And I hope I didn't overfill it because I'm slowly getting sick and tired of this whole procedure. It's kind of stupid. Why didn't they just put a normal a fitting down there and then maybe a little tubing and then have a, a kind of a normal long dipstick up here somewhere? Chrysler, come on, get it together. Anyways, um, I'm going to do that. After that, I'm going to change the spark plugs and the air filter. And then I'm going to turn the vehicle around. And then, uh, since we're at it, why not show you? So, <clears throat> there is the torque distribution unit. I think that's what they call it. It's this puppy, which is pretty much the front differential slash... Um, transfer case in certain you know it's not a full-on 4x4 it only has all-wheel drive and then you can flip a switch and then it turns it into a permanent four-wheel drive um, here's a drain plug here's a fill plug uh, it takes 80w90 gl5 change that already and then at the rear end yeah everybody else would call it the rear end um, here in this case, it's the um, rear differential RDA. I don't know exactly what that stands for. And somewhere on here is a drain plug. And if, uh, I think this is the fill plug that I'm touching right now, right over there. And a drain plug, which I haven't found yet. Um, and this also takes ADW, uh, ADW90 GL5 cheap from Walmart you know they always say oh don't buy the cheap oil but I believe all those companies make the same type of oil anyways uh, as long as you follow the specification so you pay attention to GL5 and GL4 and um, you, you pay attention to your transmission fluid um, as I mentioned it is SP4 rated oil either made by Chrysler or Mopar or you just buy Valvoline, Max Life SP5, uh, SP4, or here in my case, I bought the PowerTech. Is it PowerTech? SuperTech from Walmart. That's also SP4 rated, and I believe it's going to work. So, anyways, um, I'm not going to show you the rest of my maintenance here. I uh, just wanted to share how this whole transmission fluid disaster works. And I hope someone is going to get something out of it. Yeah, there's my to-do list. Air filter, cabinet, cabin filter, spark plugs, RDA oil change. Oh, yeah, and I have to pay some bills. Anyways, you guys have a good night. And uh, see you in the next video. Take care.